Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming back at you with another video. Well, we're back on the uh, KV-75. So I figured I'd uh, snap into it like a slim gem. Alright, so right now I got the motor running out of oil right now, draining. Move some of the stuff out of the way here. Get these over here. Alright, I'm going to move you guys over here. I'm out of your way and you're out of my way. You can see what I'm doing. Alright. So, you guys are probably wondering what we're doing today. One right like that. Okay. Put that like that. Just going to put the engine plug back into it. Wasn't a whole lot of oil in that anyway. All right. So, we are going to be tearing apart this engine. We're not going to do the whole thing today. We're going to do it in sections. A um, little history on this particular engine. It's got a, a common problem with shifting forks and different shafts and stuff like that. Running it, ruining and, and uh, breaking and wearing out. This one happens to be in decent shape. I don't know how the internals look. But judging from the externals, I'm going to rebuild this entire engine. We're going to put new bearings and seals into it. It's got a leak. And the leak that it does have, the seal is on the inside of the case. So, we are going to rebuild this engine. Now, because we have to take it apart anyway to get out the seal that is bad. So, today, we're going to stop by stripping down this half of the case. And we're going to take the magneto off because i got to modify the plate while this thing's all being done. At the same time, we have to be very cautious we don't break the housing on this side that's already broken that we have to have welded. So, I'm just going to snap into it. I'm using the impact driver right here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to um, crack all the bolts loose and then we can take them off with a big screwdriver. But before we do that, we're going to take the magneto off because I want to get that pulled um, so I can do the um, make the, mo the modified plate for it. So what I'm going to do, I'm using a piston stop in the spark plug hole. You guys can see that, yep. You guys know the drill. You guys seen it before on the channel. Screw it in, rotate the crank around. 14. This is not, I didn't torque this one, which is good. So it's going to come off pretty easy. I just did it for modification of purposes. I'm going to put this up over here so we don't lose it. We're going to mark all the screws and bolts. I'm using a flywheel uh, removal tool. These are universal, but um, let's see here. person asked me the question. In the description, I'm just going to put the, um, the... I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, you can see it there. I'll hold it like that for a second. If you can see the markings on it, an M24 and an M27 uh, millimeters. So this side right here is a metric 24. This one's a metric 27. If you need to get a puller tool, it's the metric 27. Okay, so we'll get that done. And the reverse threads. So you're going to you're going to loosen them to take it off. If you guys can see that, all right? Yep. adjustable pliers which the end of this is a 19 millimeter if you need to uh, do it that way but put that back on just a stop yeah already had that off already we're gonna clean up that mag I'm gonna take the, the pin the um the C the um keyhole the keyway and clip it right to it so it's not gonna be lost it's gonna be right down the magnet and then so I don't lose them I'm gonna take the washer and the nut and also put them in there and then this can go into a baggie and nothing's going to be lost. Okay, take that out, put that like that, it's all done. And when you get, when you do in pistons, they come with a uh, piston bag, a Wiseco piston bag, this is what the piston comes in. 
I keep these bags. I don't get rid of them. I keep them. And I'm going to take the tool. And it keeps my tool clean and safe. I also... like to keep the piston stop tool with that tool. So I keep them both together in the same bag. Just kind of a little thing that I do is that way when I go to get my tool I know that I'm getting both items and that's where they're sitting in my toolbox. Alright, so we got that part done. I only held on the mag with one screw. So let's see if we can get that screw up. It was kind of stripped. I drilled a lot of holes. Okay. Yep, came out. I keep even the bad tapered ones. Now you can get these at the hardware store. Um, it doesn't have, they're not graded screws or anything like that. In fact, you can see the threads on this one are pretty boogered up. And um, I mean, that's just from years of, you know, being coming off and putting on. I, I put it on a hundred times with, you know, even using the regular the Phillips screw that you're supposed to use. It uh, sometimes can get boogered up, you know, torquing them and all that type of stuff. All right, so before I go any further, I gotta mark that hole. Okay. Now, just so you guys know, you can see all the holes that I drilled in it to adjust the timing, and I got to the one I needed. And now I'm gonna take this plate and throw this plate in the garbage. I have another plate just like it that I'm gonna drill the holes in the precise spot where they need to be, and then I'm gonna make a template. And then I'm going to um, post that. Okay. So this is just a mock-up plate. I'm not using it. It's not staying. Then on this side right here, you got your main bearing over here. Get you guys over in focus here. We got the main bearing assembly right here for the crank case. Um, we're going to be separating this case. But for today... Before we do this, see here's the part right here we have to get to. This is the part that here is broken. This piece comes out. Um, I have it all fitted in there so I can see if it's how it goes and make sure it's 100%. Well, we have to have that part right there TIG welded. Uh, but today we're not working on this side of the case. Today we're working on this side of the case. So we're going to pull this the clutch assembly out um, in this side of the case for this video. And we're going to do a series of videos on this. Um, to get this thing torn down, stripped down, figure out what we need for parts and pieces. So we've got your oil pump and all that. We're going to be changing out the oil pump. I don't think that this is going to come out too easily. I'm not expecting, I'm not expecting it to. Sometimes they do. You know how they are. Sometimes they don't. So we'll see if we can. This is an old popular mechanics, um, screwdriver. I actually got this at a yard sale very, very long time ago. It's been a very great screwdriver. Um, if you go to a yard sale, you can find these. And it's got this metal piece on the end. You can actually hit that with a hammer, which is nice. And it drives into the screw. And makes it so that when you go take it out, the screw comes out a lot easier. And judging from the contaminants and the fact that there was no washer on the end of that, this screw right here is pretty boogied up. But we have a factory replacement screw with the actual copper washer from the old oil pump off the motor we grab it from. So we're going to use that. But we're not going to lose these screws. Now the reason why I'm loosening up these screws now is so when I have the case out, I'm not driving on the case, not bolted to the motor. There's nothing to get the shock from. All right, so now we got two screws out. I'm gonna take this insulation board here, shrink you guys down, just a regular piece of insulation. All right, and I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go like that, like that. That's going to simulate my oil pump right there. Boom. Boom. Right there. 
And then I'm going to take the screws that are replacing those ones. And I'm going to push them into spot. Just like so. All right. And then for reference point, I got the round piece here. So I'm going to do the round piece here. Right on here front. And the oil cap. Yes, represents my oil cap. And then kick starter shaft over here. Okay, so basically kind of do the side cover so I know where the screws go and uh, we call it there. How many I got. And so forth. So then as I get them off, I'm going to then plug them into the spot. And I gotta take off the two intake ones. Okay, so I removed all the screws and I plugged them into that water right here. Now what I'm gonna do because there's really no measurements for all these screws, like if I if they did get mixed up, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an actual template of this and I'm gonna mark I'm gonna measure out each screw, figure out what I need for screws and replace them all. Okay, so we undid the intake screws as well because we're going to be taking the intake off as well. So I don't really want to disturb the oil lines. So what we're going to do over here, let's draw an oval right up in here. Go you know, intake. Both screws are the same length. I'm going to plug them through here like that. Okay. I'm not worried about the gasket surfaces or anything like that. Okay. Because it's all going to be replaced. Right, now, we got to find a place to tap from. Tip this up on its own like that. Okay. Okay, see that alright? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now this has not been off before. I'm sure it's gonna be stuck on there pretty well. I can't imagine it coming off too easily. And it really doesn't seem to be a place to um, grab from. And you don't want to ruin a case either. So sometimes there's a tab on these. Sometimes there's not. Alright, there is a lip. Not bring down my little hammer. I can use this one right here so be careful with it. Okay, I got it separated. Alright. So what I did was right here on the outer edge there's a lip. I stuck my screwdriver here and gently tapped on it to see if I can get it to move out. And it did. Moved out. Moved out just fine. Okay. Might have to go a little bit more with it. Like I said, you don't want to be brutal on it. Just worked back and forth on it and it finally broke free, popped up. And then you can see what we're looking at in here. 
Okay. Get your clutch right here. Looks like it had some water in there at one point. See right here, some rust. Shouldn't be any rust in there at all. Period. And I got rust. So this is the automatic clutch assembly right here. This is a real simple system, guys. Real basic system um, for working. So you get your clutch mechanism over here. It looks like we are going to have ourselves a little bit of fun. So we have the whole clutch assembly right here that's bolted onto the shaft. Then we have the, um, this is where the clutch would actually be on a regular engine. And that's your drive gear to turn the transmission. Now this is an auto, a semi-automatic clutch. So there is no um, mechanism to move it back and forth. In fact, these are your adjusters for it right here. And that's your, for your clutch adjustment. But we're not going to get into that today. We're going to get into that at another time. So for today, we're just tearing apart this side of the engine. And uh, we're going to go from there. This looks like it's going to be a fun one. So, all right, I'm going to pause you guys, take a little break, and I'll be back in a minute. All right, so I'm back. All right, so we got, um, had to break these bolts loose. These are, um, regular threads in the right proper direction. They are really torqued in there, guys. I loosened up this one too before I came back because I think it was going to be an issue. So it looks like we're going to have to get some pulling systems um, going to get these these things out. They are not for the faint of heart, that is for sure. Um, mind you, I've never had one of these apart, so this is a learning experience for both of us together. Okay. All right, so let's see here. We've got... Um, Okay, alright, so I don't want to tap on the threads. Just wonder if I can just tap on that and make it come loose. Yep, okay. Gentle taps. Okay. There's a, a, a washer in here too. Don't lose that washer. There's the key. There's a key on the crank, and there's the balls for the uh, for the clutch. Okay. Then there's the driver for the whole mechanism itself, and there is a thrust washer in here, right there. Okay. And there's a roll bearing on the inside, and make sure that is not rusted or destroyed. And the bushings all look good. Here is the bushing for the clutch right here. You can see that. Actually looks all in good shape. So far, so good. And there's a spacer. This is the part right here that the crank seal rides on. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take a zip tie and go through the bottom and zip tie it all the way to the top. I'm going to do that after. I pull that apart. Now on this side right here, same thing. When you take it apart, be very careful. If you're not in the washer for that one. It goes on this side. You have your gear. And your mask here, you can see the rust on it, which we're going to clean all that off. And as you're pulling them apart, you're inspecting them, making sure that they're not worn out. And you're going to put them back together in the order that they came out of. And I'm going to be using a, um, like I said, a zip tie around them. The nut I can't zip tie, but it can go in the same baggie. Now, I'm going to tip this up like this. I'm going to stick the hammer underneath here like so. 
so you guys can see what I'm doing. And now you have your shifter mechanism. Okay, let me see if I can expand you here, guys. Okay, tip you up and move you over. Okay, so you have your crankshaft right here. You have your gear selector right here, your drum. You have your input shaft here and your output shafts on the other side. And then here is your gear selector. So on the other side where you shift gears, that's the mechanism for it right there. So we're going to pop that out. That comes off fairly easy. Push it through like so. And this is the shaft right here that we have to replace because the end is all buggered up. So we're going to grind off this weld here on this end. And we're going to cut down a KE100 shaft and re-weld it onto there. And because there's no timing marks on it, it doesn't really matter which way it goes on. Alright, so that is where we are on this. Now... The next step on this whole entire mess. Oh, by the way, how I held the, um, how I stopped the crank from turning when I loosened up the nut, I put the, uh, what do you call it there? The piston stop back into it. Show you. I used the piston stop back in the, in the cylinder to stop it from turning. And then that's how we went with that. So now, where we're at is we've got the engine the engine is all this whole side is all stripped down as you can see and you can see all the crap and debris in there I mean this this oil hasn't been changed it's got some junk in it so this whole engine really needs to be gone through we're going to take out the uh, crank bearings we're going we're not doing that today there's an arrow pointing forward so you can see right here there's an arrow but I'm going to go over that all next video with you. We're going to do this um, stage by stage. So this right here is this side. I'm going to zip tie those up, get them into baggies. And then on this side of the engine, the only thing left on this one is that um, gear right there. I'll show you how to take that off. And then the cylinder and the, um, what do you call it there, the piston and the head. So I guess we can get that off real quick. What do you think, huh? Should we get that off? Take off the head. Head, take off the head, head, take off the head. Off with your head. Alright. Getting really oily here. Now looks like we're ten. Yep. Alright. Hopefully we don't uh, have any, well, we're not using the um, cylinder anyway, but a lot of this we're not using, but we are going to split the case on this thing, get into the transmission, check out all the forks, and replace all the seals and grommets and everything that needs to be replaced, gaskets, seals, etc. Come on. Okay, we'll go out that way, go out this way. Be careful for that side over there. They have to uh, have rewelded. Don't want that to bend or break, or twist or bend or whatever. So we gotta be careful with that. Because once I get this all stripped down, we're then gonna take the uh, the block down and have it welded, have that back part fixed right away. So I have to clean it. Fix it, get it all welded. I'm going to have everything welded at the same time. I'm not playing games with it, so if you can do them all at the same time, that'll be one whole big, big shebang to deal with. We're going to replace all the gaskets and seals on this, like I said. a wee little bit of a combustion chamber it's got <laughs> this thing is stupid light too i mean 
really, really light. And I'll probably get that cylinder out. Let's see if we can give it a little bit of assistance coming out. Tapped on the motor mount. Okay. Right. So on the head gasket, we'll be looking for any blown spots on it. Even though these are reusable, we're rebuilding this motor, so it's going to get a new one. The cylinder is in excellent condition. Bore wise, you know. And then, that's pretty much it. You can see the exhaust part of the piston. Everything looks good there on the internals. So, you just gotta pull that clip off. And then, uh, that'll be it for that. Let me see if I can get something strong enough to yank that clip out of there with. Got the circle clip out right there. I'm only taking it off of one side. There you have it, the piston. So it looks like it's getting all carboned up right there. No stuck rings. Needs to be cleaned, but other than that, it's in good shape. And of course, the the wrist pin bearing. All right. So now, on the next video, what we'll be doing is we'll be separating the case on this thing. And you can see how nice it looks inside there. So, hopefully, that's a sign. Um, really not much to this engine. This engine is really, really light. This is the Kawasaki KD75 MT1. Same same motor, same bike. Um, that we're working on, on this series. And we're going to separate the case, get the transmission out, replace all the seals, get it welded up, get it cleaned up, get it all dolled up. I really wasn't going to do that with this bike. But, you know what? It's got some wear on a few parts. It's a good time to go through it. The bike's, you know, it's spring, it's some, uh, winter time. So by the time we hit springtime, we'll be good to go. And then this bike will be all up and running and uh, be good. So we're going to separate the cases next time. And uh, here's the vent right here, the vent for that. we got to fix this aluminum piece right here that is really just messed up. We're going to have to figure out how to do that. Probably going to be some light tapping on it, you know. Get that into place. And then have them weld that up. Put that broken piece back into it. Have them MIG, uh, TIG weld it all back up. And then it will be like brand new. This, all this damage here happened because the uh, chain broke. And we're going to have them put a bead of weld here where it's, because everything else is perfect. I right, might have them touch right there too. We're going to weld that and weld that. And then we're going to go over that with a Dremel tool. We'll bring it right back down to, the, to where it's supposed to be. And then that'll be golden. So that's where we're at with that. So tomorrow we're going to pull apart the case, separate the whole thing. And um, get the crank out, get all the gears out, take a look and see what we're looking at and where we have to go with that. So, other than that, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty impressed with this little motor. Uh, really not much to it, honestly. So, 
Well, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And uh, please share the page. This is the KV75 MC1. And uh, we're going to get into it. We're going to separate the case, get into the whole thing, inspect the transmission gears, inspect the, uh, the shafts, the um, shifting forks, everything. So... Thank you guys again for watching. Please subscribe. And thank you for all the new subscribers. You guys are all welcome to the channel. Um, thank you very much. And I hope you guys uh, learned something. And I hope I can help you guys with your, um, your jobs. So, talk to you guys later. Bye.